اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد الحديث الثاني والعشرون من الاربعين للامام النووي رحمه الله عن ابي عبد الله جابر بن عبد الله الانصاري رضي الله عنهما ان رجلا سال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال ارايت اذ صليت المكتوبات وصمت رمضان واحللت الحلال وحرمت الحرام ولم ازد على ذلك شيئا ادخل الجنه قال نعم رواه مسلم رحمه الله والحديث التاسع والعشرون عن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله اخبرني بعمل يدخلني الجنه ويباعدني عن النار قال لقد سالت عن عظيم وانه لا يسير على من يسره الله تعالى عليه تعبد الله لا تشرك به شيئا ولا تقيم الصلاه وتؤتي الزكاه وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت تحج البيت ثم قال الا ادلك على ابواب الخير الصوم جنه والصدقه تطفئ الخطيه كما يطفئ الماء النار وصلاه الرجل في جوف الليل ثم تلا تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع حتى بلغ يعملون ثم قال الا اخبرك براس الامر وعموده وذكره السلام قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال راس الامر الاسلام وعموده الصلاه وذروه سلامه الجهاد ثم قال الا اخبرك بملاك ذلك كله قلت بلى يا رسول الله فاخذ بلسانه وقال كف عليك هذا قلت يا نبي الله وانا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به فقال سكنت قومك يا معاذ وهل يكب يكب الناس في النار على وجوههم او قال على مناخرهم الا حصائد السنتهم رواه الامام الترمذي رحمه الله وقال حديث حسن صحيح these two hadith that i have narrated just now most of you must have understood those who are attending these lectures regularly they again these two ahadith refer to the same two ahadith which i have been saying are the most fundamental ahadith most fundamental one of them has been accepted by the whole of the ummah by the experts in the knowledge of hadith al muhaddisun that it is the ummu sunnah the basis of sunnah or the mother of sunnah just as surah al fatiha is ummu al quran i am sorry that the attention of the ummah did not focus that much on the second hadith while it appears to me that this hadith is also equal to the first one the one narrated by muadh ibn jabal razi allahu an and the video of that hadith the dars of that hadith was shown yesterday both these ahadith give us a very deep insight a very clear understanding of what islam is now this second hadith did not get this attention because 
the level of the authenticity of this hadith is not so high. It is not from the Sahih of Imam Muslim or Sahih of Imam Bukhari. But as I showed already, one part of that hadith is Muttafaqun Alayh. And Ibn Umar, we have read it. أُمِرْتُ أَنْ وَقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُ وَاللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُتُ الزَّكَاةِ This part of the hadith is most authentic. Then there is another hadith which I have narrated today that relates to another part of that hadith. Anyhow, to me it appears that just like the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Half of the balance of the marfa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the gnosis. This is written with G, but pronounced without G. Gnosis? No, gnosis. Gnostics. Arifin, Gnostics. And you might be remembering that many of the Muhaddisin and many of the Mufassirin, I should say, have said that the meaning of the ayah, Wama khalaqtu jinna wal insa illa li ya'budun is Wama khalaqtu jinna wal insa illa li ya'rifun. If this marfa is there, there's no question that the ibadah will not be there. We are not doing ibadah because we have not known Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. And there's a very clear hadith. Ma arafna ka haqqa ma'arifatik wa ma abadna ka haqqa ma'abadatik. So marfa, the gnosis of Allah. And Ibadah go side by side. So here in that hadith, the Prophet says, at tasbih nisful mizan. The balance of the gnosis of Allah, the knowledge of Allah is filled half by the kalima subhanallah. And it becomes full with the kalima alhamdulillah. التصبيح نصف الميزان والحمد لله تملو fills the whole balance. In the same way, these two ahadis give you the understanding, the deep insight into Deen. What is Deen? What are its constituent parts? What are its levels? What's the important thing, the most important thing, and then the next, and then the next. So this insight, this wisdom of Deen, is contained in these two riwayat. Number one, Hadith of Jibreel, and number two, Hadith of Ma'ad ibn Jabal, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Now about that Hadith of Jibreel, the Umm Sunnah, although I spent quite a lot of time on it, Still, I realized that a few points need to be made clear more. Number one, the sequence of the question of Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam is different in this hadith that we read, which is included in this collection that has been narrated by Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu. There we find the first question was Akhbirni Anil Islam. The second was Akhbirni Anil Iman. But the Muttafaqun Alayh narration of this hadith, which is from Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, that says that the first question was Akhbirni Anil Iman. And the second was Akhbirni Anil Islam. Now definitely, there is some mistake by one of the Ravis, one of the narrators. The incident is one. There can be no two opinions about this. That the incident was one. 
the reporters are too. And as I told you, this is the basic difference between Hadith and Quran. Quran is preserved word by word, letter to letter. But this is not the case of Hadith. The basic thought is preserved. The basic idea given by the Hadith is preserved, protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not all the words. Not only the words. There might be a difference in the sequence of the narration. But now look to this aspect. That this is all so very beautiful that we have this hadith with two different sequences. Because really there are two different conditions. <coughs> a person who was a non-Muslim or a kafir or skeptic or atheist or whatsoever you may call him. He was not a Muslim. Now he becomes a Muslim. For him, Iman is first. Islam comes later on. Iman is first. He must proclaim, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Amantu billahi kama huwa bi asmaihi wa sifatihi wa qabiltu jami' ahkamihi iqrarun bil lisani wa tasdiq bil qalb. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al akhir wal qadri khairihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala wal ba'sa ba'd al mawt. Iman is first. That was the case for sahaba ikram. They had Iman first, Islam later on. And we may say that Islam was not at all present until that time. And by that I mean that the law, the detailed structure of Sharia was not there. Throughout the 12 years at Mecca, the wine was not prohibited. The interest of riba or usury was not prohibited. So Islam had, so to say, yet to come. It was all Iman. So for them, Iman was first, Islam was later on. But what about a person who is a born Muslim? He is Muslim from the very day of his birth. When he is, maybe he is, if only three years or four years when he starts, you know, standing with the parents in the prayers. And then he learns. So he's a Muslim first and Mumin later on. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the real Iman. And it's a big if. It will have to be acquired. So that way, both these sequences are correct. In one way, Islam is first, Iman is later on. In the other condition, Iman is first and Islam comes later. The second thing about this hadith which I want to mention is that we must remember that there is a very beautiful ayah in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, which corresponds to that hadith, Umm Sunnah, Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu was salam. The three stations, Islam, Iman, Ihsan, three stations. Now this terminology is of the Sufiya, Maqamat and Suluk. Somebody is striving to get nearer and nearer and nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This endeavor of his. is suluk. Suluk means to walk, to cover a distance, traveling. Suluk. Man salaka tariqan jal tasamu fihi al-ilm. There's a very beautiful hadith. Whosoever has taken a journey only to gather knowledge of the I, not, I don't want to give the full hadith, you know, other, all the, otherwise all the time will be consumed. So, suluk is going in the path of Allah. 
بٹ دیر آر اسٹیشن مقامات سلوک اینڈ مقامات دیز تھری اسٹیشن اسلام ایمان احسان دے آر ویری بیوٹیفلی ڈپکٹیڈ ان ون آیا صورت المائدہ When the final commandment regarding the prohibition of liquor and wine came and gambling, the Muslims became very nervous. If wine was so bad a thing, not just one, well, we have been consuming it all our lives. Maybe somebody is 60 years old, 65 years old like me, and I have been consuming all my life. That, what does it mean? The, every, each and every cell of my existence must be polluted with it. So they were concerned. Because, as we know, they listened to Quran and Hadith for practicing it. And whenever they listened to some new ayah, First of all, they look to themselves to evaluate whether we can fulfill it. So to relieve this anxiety of the Sahaba Ikram, there is an ayah. لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاهٌ فِي مَا تَعِمُوا إِذَا مَتَّقَوْا وَآمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سمت تقو و آمن سمت تقو و احسن و اللہ یحب المحسن دیز نو بلیم نو ہارم آن دیم ہو ہیو بین کنٹینیوسلی اسٹرائیونگ فار دی کاز آف اللہ اینڈ دے ہیو بین بلیونگ ان اللہ اینڈ ڈوئنگ آل دی گڈ ڈیڈس ڈیمانڈیڈ آف ڈیمانڈیڈ آف دیم There's no blame on them of what they have eaten or drunk before. Before that commandment came, whatever you have done, you will not be held responsible. No blame will come to you. لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاحٌ فِي مَا تَعِمُوا Whatever they have consumed already, it's consumed, it's gone. But in this background now, these three stations, لیس الزین آمن عامل صالحات جناح فی ما تعیم اضا مت تقو و آمن و عامل صالحات وین دے ہیڈ دی فیئر آف اللہ اینڈ دے ہیڈ دی ریئل تقوا اینڈ دے کیم ٹو بلیو اینڈ دے پرفارم آل دی گڈ ڈیڈس ریکوائرڈ آف دیم سمت تقو و آمن اینڈ دین اگین دے ہیڈ مور تقوا اینڈ مور آف ایمان سمت تقو و احسن دین اگین دے ہیڈ مور تقوا اینڈ دے ریچ دی لیول آف احسان اللہ یحب المحسنین اینڈ دس لیول آف احسان ہو سو ایور ریچ از دس لیول ہی از بیکم اے بلوڈ آف اللہ نٹ اونلی اے لور آف اللہ اے بلوڈ آف اللہ دیز آر دی تھری اسٹیشن بٹ ہیئر دی ورلڈ اسلام ہیز ناٹ بین یوز پلیز نوٹ The legal iman is Islam. Legal iman, shahada. Shahada Allah, ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. This is iman, this is Islam. And at this legal level of iman, amal salih is a separate entity. I have discussed these things in detail in my lectures on iman. Six hours on iman you have already in videos and audios. Legal iman. is based only on shahada attestation, verbal attestation. And at this level of iman, the deeds are a separate entity. But the real iman is the conviction in the heart. That is the second station. Here the good deeds become an integral part of iman itself. There is no need to mention them separately. So first, at the first level, Iman and Abal Saleh. At the second level, Iman. That's all. When Iman has reached that level of conviction, it's already understood. 
the deeds, the good actions, the good character, the good behavior, Holokun Hasanun, they become an integral part of Iman, as Imam Bukhari says, Al Imanu Qawlun Wa Amalun, Wa Yazidu Wa Yanqus. But at the legal level, Al Imanu Qawlun, Al Amal, that's a separate entity. And that's the position of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. He's a jurist. At that level, he's 100% correct. But at the second station of Iman, the real Iman, the conviction, what Imam Bukhari says is 100% correct. And then, you know, when this Iman has reached that level, it is Ihsan. Now we have reached that level that you become dear to Allah, beloved of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let me mention here one thing. One of the very early writings of Maulana Madhudi, very profound, very profound, very profound, Tehreek-e Islami ki akhlaqi bunyadeh, one of the very early writings. I don't know whether it is published today as a separate booklet or it has been included in some bigger volume, I don't know. But the booklet, Tahrik Islami ki Akhlaqi Bunyadeh, in that he discussed these four words Islam, Iman, Taqwa, and Ihsan. And the best narration and description with only one difference of opinion. And that I want to mention here. He has enumerated and counted taqwa also as a station. How he explains is absolutely correct. But the sequence, I differ with him. I think he's wrong over there. Taqwa is not a station. It's the spirit which pushes you from the lower to the higher, and from higher to the still higher. This is not a station. The station, Maqamat, there are three. Islam, Iman, Ihsan. As given by the Umm Sunnah, by the Hadith of Jibreel. And as given in this ayah of the Quran. You know, Taqwa is repeated thrice. لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاهٌ فِي مَا تَعِمُوا إِذَا مَتَّقَوْا وَآمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سُمَّ اتَّقَوْا وَآمَنُوا سُمَّ اتَّقَوْا وَأَحْسَنُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ This taqwa is not, this is actually, that why I said, you know, differentiate between suluk and maqam. You are jamming and station after station, you are passing. So these are the stations, Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Highest station, topmost is Ihsan. Because here the Iman has reached the very deep level. But Taqwa is not a station according to the terminology of Quran and Hadith. It is the moving spirit which pushes you. Summa Taqaw, Summa Taqaw, Summa Taqaw. But the stations are three. Now this hadith, which I have narrated today, it is again concerning the first station, according to the hadith, Ummul Sunnah, as narrated by Hazrat Umar. First thing was Islam. <coughs> and we have the Muttafaqun Alayhi Riwayah from Abdullah ibn Umar, we have, which we have already read. Boni al-Islam wa ala khamsin, shahadati Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah, wa iqami salati wa itai zakati wa sawmi ramadana wa hajjil bayt. Here again, the same thing, but with a different dimension. An Abi Abdullah Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari radiyallahu anhuma, anna rajul ansala rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, he says that a person asked a question from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqal, and he said, Araita, 
O oh, Masjidul Fallah, what's your opinion? What do you say? Is our Salatul Maktubat? If I perform the obligatory prayers, Maktubat, which are false, was to Ramadan, and I keep fasting during the month of Ramadan. Wahlaltul Halal, and I take whatever is permissible to be permissible. That is, I use only the things which are permissible to use, which are halal. Wahlaltul Haram, and then I avoid whatever is forbidden. Walam Azid Ala Zalika Shaya. This is the crux of the matter. And I don't add anything to it. Adhulul Jannah. Will I enter the paradise? Kalanam. The answer was yes. Very fundamental hadith. But we have to understand the background. Because in a society, in a human society, all people are not of the same level of understanding. They don't have all those opportunities of learning knowledge. They are not equal in these respects. They are common people, the laborer, the farmer. What about these people? They don't have knowledge what to speak of wisdom. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear many a times in Quran, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wusaha. There should be some basic level for the common, the masses, common people. So here, if somebody is handicapped, <coughs> if he couldn't study at all, couldn't have any education, if he couldn't learn Arabic also, well, he will be excused. But not a person who did his PhD in English, but did not learn Arabic. How can he be excused? So for common people of limited intelligence, limited understanding, badly and mostly occupied in earning their bread, having no time to ponder, to reflect, even to think, who am I and where from I have come <coughs> and where I am heading. They don't have time. When they return home, they are tired, dead tired. They pass the night like the logs of wood. And only then they can have the rejuvenation of their energies to start the work of the following day. So for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concessions. Now if you keep this hadith at this level, it's okay. But if you make it a rule for every person, then it becomes wrong. Araita is a salatul maktubat, wasum to Ramadan, wahlal to halal, waharam to haram, walam azid ala zalika shayya. At Hurul Jannah, Karalam. Now, he's no jihad here, no ikamatuddin here, nothing, nothing of the sort. But this is for those people who are lying low in this world also. But people endowed with capabilities, intelligence, understanding, all the good faculties, and they are rising day by day, every day, higher and higher up in this world. If they take to this hadith, well, they are mistaken. Now I come to the hadith that is. The 29th hadith in this collection, 
And this gives us another part of the hadith of Waaz ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an. You know the big and the detailed narration of this hadith. I love it very much. You feel as if you are a part and parcel of that environment when you are reading that hadith. And the concern and the anxiety of Maaz ibn Jabal. How can I save myself from far of hell? A companion of Allah, or the, of the messenger of Allah. And among those companions about whom the Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah, has used superlative terms. تَرْحَمَ أُمَّتِي بِأُمَّتِي أَبُو بَكْرِ وَأَشَدُّهُمْ فِي أَمْرِ اللَّهِ عُمَرِ وَأَكْسَرُهُمْ حَيَعَانُ عُسْمَانِ وَأَقْضَاهُمْ عَلِيْهِ These are the superlatives. And the same superlative for Maaz ibn Jabal. وَعَلَمُهُمْ بِالْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ مَعَاذُ ibn Jabal. The most learned about the halal and haram is my companion Maaz ibn Jabal. وَأَصْدَقُهُمْ لَحْجَةً أَبُو ذَرْ The most truthful in the sense that whatever is in his appearance and outside of his personality, exactly the same is within his personality. Asdaqahum lahjat al Nabuzar. Akrahum ubayu ibn Ka'ab. So one of those Sahaba about, he, about whom the Prophet used the superlatives, and he is anxious. قَدْ أَمْرَضَتْنِي وَأَسْقَمَتْنِي وَأَحْزَنَتْنِي O Messenger of Allah, let me ask a question to you which has made me sick. I'm so much grieved. What's that? Tell me, how can I save myself from the fire of hell? And how can I get entry into paradise? Now just have the simultaneous contrast of these two ahadis which I am narrating today. On the one side a common sahabi, maybe a Bedouin, a person not very knowledgeable. He wants an assurance that if I did this much, will I enter Jannah? Oh yes. But here is Waaz ibn Jabal. But because that narration of this hadith is not very much authentic, regarding authenticity, it doesn't reach the level that Imam, Abu, Imam Bukhari or Imam Muslim might have included it into their collections. But the part of these, this hadith, we have already read, أُمِرْتُ أَنُوا قَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُوا اللَّهِ إِلَّهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَنَّ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Now here we have Another part of this hadith, and this is from Ba'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu himself. Qultu ya Rasulullah. Now he is narrating. I asked the messenger of Allah, O messenger of Allah, akhbirni bi'amalin yudkhuluni al-jannah wa yuba'iduni al-nar. Inform me of the deeds that will take me away from the fire of hell. And make me enter the paradise, Jannah. قال لقد سألت عن عظيم. In that narration we find, بخن بخن. لقد سألت بعظيم. لقد سألت بعظيم. لقد سألت بعظيم. سلاسم. Here it is only once. The Prophet said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, you have asked about something very big. If you are concerned, it's really a matter about which a man must be concerned. If you are anxious, it's really an affair about which you must be anxious. Your anxiety or your concern is not business. لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنَ عَظِيمٌ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَصِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسْرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ And it becomes easy for those for whom Allah makes it easy. 
Don't be confident of yourself. Don't think you can make it yourself. It's something very big. To be saved from the fire of hell. And to enter Jannah is not an easy job. As I said to you, always keep these two prayers in mind as well as in practice. Alhamdulillah illazi hadana alihasa wa maakunna alilahtadi ala ulaan hadar Allah. Rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da is hadayatana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma inna ka anta al-wahhab. فَسَنُ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Oh Allah, include us among those. Now the answer. تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ لَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيِّدْ Now please note, when you have to give the whole essence of deen in a few words, the whole essence of all the Prerequisites of salvation, the words will be different. But when you divide them into stages and stations, then the words are different. This is the most important point in this hadith and the lengthy hadith that you listened to yesterday. The long hadith. Now here the Prophet is giving the gist of all the requirements for saving yourself from fire of hell and for entering Jannah. Here the word is Ta'budullah. Not only you worship, you be a full bondsman to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tushriku bihi shayyan. And you don't associate with him anything. Now keep the whole concept of shirk, not only worshipping idols, also worshipping wealth. Ta'is abdud deen arev abdud dirham. Doomed is he who is a bondsman to dinar and dirham. He loves dinar and dirham more than anything else. He can take to haram means of earning dinar and dirham because of the love of wealth. He is a mushrik. Man salla yurai faqad ashraka wa man swama yurai faqad ashraka wa man tasaddaqa yurai faqad ashraka Whosoever is praying to show off his piety, he has already committed shirk. Qad ashraka. Present perfect tense. Whosoever is fasting to show off, he keeps so many optional fasts a month. Go. Oh. That is why it is said. If you are fasting, nafl, hide it from the people. Don't let people know that you are fasting. Even if you are caught somewhere, where either you have to take something or you have to disclose that I am fasting. Take something. Don't disclose you are fasting. And your fast will continue. It will not be broken. Hiding is essential for the nafil ibadat. Man swalla yurai fakat ashraka, wa man swama yurai fakat ashraka, wa man tasaddaqa yurai fakat ashraka. Now you take ibadah in that full sense and shirk in that full sense. Now this gives you the whole of the deen. What remains out? So ta'budu allaha la tushriku bihi shayyan wa tuqeemu salata wa tuti zakah. 
and establish the prayers, the obligatory prayers, and zakah. وَتَصُومُ رَمَضَانَ وَتَحُجُّ الْبَيْتُ And keep fast during the month of Ramadan and perform the pilgrimage to the house of Allah. Now this is the answer, the composite answer, the wholesome answer, giving all the requirements. Because here, Salah, Saum, Hajj, Zakah, but before them, Ibadah, not only Shahada, Ibadah. If it is Shahada only, along with these four modes of worship, it takes you to the first station only. Bodiya al-Islam wa ala qamsin shahadati an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah wa iqami salati wa ita'i zakati wa swami ramadhan wa adil bayt. Here again you find the same four modes of worship. But prior to those modes of worship is ibadah. Total obedience. Become a whole bondsman. Total obedience to Allah and avoiding all shades of shirk from jali to khafi. Ta'budu Allah la tushriku bihi shayyan wa tuqimu salata wa tuqis zakata wa tasumu ramadana wa tahudju al-bayt. Now if you have done this. Summa qala ala adulluka ala abwabi khair. Now the Prophet himself is asking a question. Oh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Do you want to tell you would want me to tell you what are the gates of virtue? Now these are Jawam ul Kalim. Asomu Jannatun. This fasting is like a shield. You can save yourself from the attacks of Shaitan as well as your own animal instincts. By this protective shield, as saw the Jannah, was sadaqat or put food, khatiya takama yud fil nar, and charity, helping people in distress, in need, it extinguishes the fire of hell, just as water extinguishes fire here in this your world. وَالصَّلَاةُ الرَّجُلِ فِي الْجَوْفِ اللَّيْلِ And the praying of a man, a person, a Muslim, in the middle of the night. When all are asleep, it's all calm and quiet. إِنَّ نَاشِيَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشَدُّ أَطْوَلْ وَأَقْوَى مُقِيلًا No disturbance. أَفْلَاقْ سَيْ آتَا هَيْ نَالُوْ كَ جَوَابْ آخِرْ كَرْتَيْ هَيْ خِتَابْ آخِرْ उठते हैं हिजाब आखिर ए कम्युनिकेशन डायरेक्ट बिटवीन यू एंड योर लॉर्ड दैन इन बिटवीन वेन दिस फाइन आइट ई गो दिस लिमिटेड अना ऑफ आवर्स दिस लिमिटेड सेल्फ ऑफ आवर्स दिस फाइन आइट ई गो कम्स फेस टू फेस विद इन फाइन आइट ई गो The great I am, as Iqbal said in his lectures. The great I am, and I think he refers to the, the ayah of Surah Taha. Inna ni an Allahu la ilaha illa ana. This ana, the infinite ana, the big I am. In prayer, you are face to face with Him. إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَتَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا لَمْ يَنَالَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ That's the opening of your prayer. What? Jawf al-Layl. Nobody comes to know. ثُمَّ تَلَا And here the Prophet ﷺ quoted the ayah of the Qur'an تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ حَتَّى بَلَغَ يَعْمَلُونَ that they, their sides, you know, keep away from their beds. When we lie down on our beds, our sides are on the beds. But keeping away, standing before Allah, reciting unto Him His Qur'an. There's a hadith, I can't quote the 
text. There's nothing better, nothing which a bondsman can, can present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more precious than what he came out of him. Kharaja min il. When you are reading Quran, you are presenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his own words. You are reciting unto him. Ma azin Allahu li shayin azinahu li husni sati bil Quran. Allah listens attentively. Allah doesn't listen to anything more attentively than as he listens to Quran being recited in a melodious way and standing at night alone. So these are the gates. Summaqal. Now this is the portion of this hadith which is the basis of the wisdom of the you know, as all of you know, we, I gave that example of three-storied building. There are three levels in that building also. Islam, Shahadat al-Nas, Yaqamat al-Din. Three main stories of jihad. And each story is subdivided into three. Three into three, go to make nine. Jihad against your nafs. Jihad against the perverted society. Jihad against Satan. This is the first level. Only then you can be a true Muslim. The Jihad of Dawah and Tabligh. That has also three levels. At the level of Hikmah and Wisdom. At the level of Mu'idatul Hazana. And at the level of Munazara and Mujadala. Arguing. Arguing. There's the jihad at the level of Iqamatuddin, again three. Passive resistance, active resistance, and armed conflict. And now here at the ninth story, jihad becomes qital fi sabibillah. If you compare this whole concept of jihad to a nine-story building, the eight stories are of jihad fi sabibillah, and the ninth one is qital fi sabibillah. قاتلوا في سبيل الله الذين يقاتلونكم وقاتلوهم حتى لا تكون فتنة ويكون الدين كله لله. But that is the ninth story. Here again you find you know three. ألا أخبرك برأس الأمر وعموده وزروة سنامه. Oh Baaz, son of Jabal. Should I not inform you of the root or the foundation of this matter of ours? The first answer was, I told you, complete in itself. The whole edifice, the whole structure, the essence of the whole. Ta'budullah la tushriku bihi shayin wa tuqeema salata wa tuti zakata wa tasumu ramadana wa tahujjul bayt. The whole thing. Because ibadah and shirk. The whole concept you must have in your mind. Here now the Prophet himself is dividing this into three parts. And you know, here he is giving the simile of a tree. It has a root, it has a trunk, and then at the top is the fruit of, for what you have planted this tree. Mango tree, mango will be on the top, not at the trunk, not at the root. If some other, other tree, if it is flower plant, the flower will be there, not in the roots or in the trunk. Zarvatu Sanam. Now the word is the hump of the camel, the highest place. So this deen of ours, this matter of ours, you can understand, it has three levels. The root, and the root is also very important. 
although you don't find any mango attached to it or any orange attached to it but the whole tree depends upon this root then the trunk and then the top so now what is the root or the basis what's the trunk which keeps it straight up supports it and what's the what is the top of this dean ala ukhbiruka bi ras al amr the root or basis of this matter of ours that is our deen wa amudihi and its column you may call it this column which is supporting the roof or the trunk of the tree which is bearing the branches and leaves and the fruit or the flowers wa zarwat e sanamihi qultu bala ya rasulullah i said why not oh messenger of allah please do tell me qal and he said ras al amr al islam wa umuduhu as salah wa zirwat us sanamihi al jihad here in that narration the lengthy one with you listened yesterday the rasul amr was shahadat wa la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadar rasul This is the beginning. Whosoever utters these words, he becomes a Muslim. The moment he utters these words, he is a Muslim. No matter whether he was a mushrik of the highest order, he was the worst of the Jews or the worst of the idolaters or the worst of anything. He says, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah." It is as if he has crossed the line. He was on the other side. He has come on this side. This is the beginning, and then he says in that hadith, "Wa qawamuhu." Here it is the word "umud," qawam, which keeps it straight, high. And there are mentioned two things: the qamu salah, wa itaw zakah. Here only one. Wa umuduhu salah, as we have in other riwayat, a salat or imadu din. Imad and Umud, but Zarwat was Sanam he al Jihad. Now the top, that is al Jihad of Fi Sabil Allah. So this is how you can have a deep insight. Incidentally, here also three things, the stations over there also three, but those you know regard more. so light more focus more on something within you iman and the depth of iman going to the level of that conviction kanna ka tarahu fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yarak and here the visible part of it the shahada then the four pillars or two pillars or one pillar because this is the biggest and most important of all the four modes of worship as salah then you have jihad and the levels of jihad as i have told you the top most would be to risk your lives by going to war for the cause of allah inna allah yuhibbu allazina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan kanhum buniyad marsus again it is mahboobiyah just as a person becomes beloved of allah subhanahu wa taala when he is a muhsin when the conviction has reached that depth wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin and when the root has gone that deep now the tree would have gone to the highest level of jihad and that is qital fi sabilillah if you have to have nine stories you have to have a very deep foundation also so that hadith islam shahada iman tasdeeq bil qalb and now this is going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and it is fathomless you can't know there is no limit there is a very beautiful saying of one of the saints of punjab 
دل دریا سمندروں ڈونگے کون دلا دیا جانے ہو فیتم لس دس ہارٹ سمندروں ڈونگے کون دلا دیا جانے ہو ہاؤ کین وی امیجن وٹ واز دی ڈیپتھ آف کنوکشن آف ابو بکر ہاؤ کین وی امیجن وٹ واز دی ڈیپتھ آف ایمان آف محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم انا اول المومنین آمن الرسول بما انزل الیہ من ربہ والمومنون یہ باتی فرس مومن but can we even imagine the depth of ایمان so that is the depth but that will be the height ضرورت السلام الجہاد فی سبیل اللہ and now this jihad reaching قتال that is the last portion of that حدیث the long حدیث by معاد بن جبل We have that portion already in this collection. From Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنهما أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يشهدوا لا إله إلا الله وأن وأني رسول الله ويقيم الصلاة ويؤتى الزكاة فإذا فعلوا ذلك أصموا مني دماءهم وأموالهم إلا بحق الإسلام وحسابهم على الله عز وجل. That part is not included here. But as an independent hadith, it is included in this collection of Imam Nabawi. Now the last part. Summa qal. This is a gem of wisdom. The most precious gem of wisdom. Which the Prophet is giving as a fuzzle to Maaz ibn Jabal. One thing you asked. And certain things I have given you myself. You asked only one thing. Yubaiduni, Dullani, lead me, tell me, how can I save myself from the fire of hell? And how can I enter paradise and Jannah? I gave you the answer, then I told you something more also. What are the Abwabul Khair? And this is the attitude of the good teachers. When he sees in the disciple, in the student, he can understand more. Don't answer his question only. Give him more also. Should I not tell you what are the gates of all this? And take something more. Take something more from me. Should I not tell you That thing which will hold all these together. Some very fundamental thing. Controlling, holding together. What is that? Qul tu bala ya Rasulullah. I said, why not? O Messenger of Allah. Fa'akhara bilisani. The Prophet caught his own tongue. And said, Kuffa alayka haza. Hold it back to you. Don't let any extra word, any wrong word, come out of it. Control your tongue. Now, Hazrat Mahathir Jabal was astonished. This is so much important. Kulto. Ya Nabi Allah, I said, O Prophet of Allah, Are we going to be brought to the task? Also on whatever, whatever we say. Faqal, in a very loving manner, according to the manners of the Arabs, the Prophet said, Sakalat kaumuka ya Mu'az. Your mother, O oh Mu'az, may your mother lose you. But this was a mode of expressing, you know, closeness. وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسَ فِي النَّارِ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِهِمْ أَوْ قَالَ عَلَىٰ بَنَاخِرِهِمْ إِلَّا حَسَائِدُ وَالْسِنَتِهِمْ Is there anything more effective in putting the people in the fire of hell 
on their faces, dragged on their faces and thrown in it. More than the harvests of their tongues. Each word that you utter becomes a seed. And a tree will be there. This harvest of your tongues, it will appear in the hereafter. This seeds of your tongues, these words coming out of you, you will see them, see them in the hereafter as a harvest and you will have to reap it. And the biggest thing that will lead people to Jahannam is the harvest of the tongue. So this is the last gem of wisdom that was given to Ba'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to this hadith. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Now tomorrow inshallah we shall be reading some ahadith. I'll try to cover four or five ahadith on one subject.